I have returned from the valley of death. <laughs> oh man, that was hell. That was absolute hell. That was awful. Um, anybody that's following my Twitter already knows this, but in case you don't, in case you've been wondering where old tagging has been at, uh, I've been down for the past uh, about three days with a really bad stomach virus. Not really more two days. I was just getting back into everything today. I went back to work today. Uh, but those two days, man, were not fun. Uh, yeah, I, I do not wish that upon my worst enemy. So, uh, so even you get a free pass, Jeremy. Um, but, you know, while I was bedridden, puking my guts out for, like, hours and hours on end, I, I started to think, you know, maybe I should go and see a doctor. So, uh, that got me thinking about Dr. Kureha from One Piece, of course, and, uh, I, I think it's, I think it's appropriate to do a video about her, considering, you know, my current circumstances. Actually, the, the, the real doctor I go to, my actual physician, her, uh, her name does start with a K, so I, I always remember because, um, the 4Kids dub, I mean, it wasn't good, but that is what I started with. That is what I grew up with, the 4Kids dub, and I remember the Drum Island arc of 4Kids very clearly. Chopper was actually voiced by the same voice actors, uh, actress that did Pikachu, um, and, and I remember they would always, uh, it's Doc Doreen in the original, uh, in the Funimation and in the original, that's what, uh, Chopper calls her. Uh, but in, uh, this one, it was, uh, Dr. K. So, there you go. Okay. Well, anyway, let, yeah, let's talk about Dr. Kareha, because she is a very interesting character. I do like her. It's kind of hard not to like the typical, um, you know, badass, older character in anime. You know, they're old and they look all frail, but they could seriously, like, beat the shit out of you, so you better pay attention to them. Um, but in the case with, uh, in the case with Dr. Kareha, it's not really that she looks all that frail because it's the weird way that Oda draws his characters. If you look at Dr. Kureha, uh, just cut out her head and just look at the rest of her body, it's like the same way that Oda draws, like, Nami or Robin. You know, like, it, it, it's in that same kind of, like, sexualized style. It's just when you get to her face, he draws it like a, like a typical witch face, like the Wicked Witch of the West, and they make a lot of references to that in, in the story. Um, and, and it's seems like the people on uh, Drum Island are kind of leery of her, not because she's a horrible doctor, uh, the exact opposite actually, she's a great doctor, in fact I'm gonna go on record saying right now that as far as human beings go in the One Piece world, there isn't a single better doctor in the entire One Piece world than Dr. Kureha, I think that's pretty fair uh, I mean, yeah, you have characters like uh, like Law, who are really skilled, and Law's got the oppie oppie no me, so he can perform all these miraculous surgeries, you have Yvonne Ankov that's capable of doing crazy things with uh, with his devil fruit, the hormone hormone Nomi. But, I mean, Kareha doesn't have any devil fruit powers whatsoever, and she's been around for 130... No, it gotta be very careful when I say she's... at the Before the time skip, she was a youthful 139 years old. After the time skip, she's 141. Although, I... Part of me feels like she doesn't want to cap that 140 off, so it's like she still goes around saying, I'm still 139, just don't bring up her age, period. Um... But she's still that old, and she's able to, you know, still be a a as physically active as she is, and she's able to uh, fix all these illnesses. And the fact that she's that old just leaves it to be like how, like, she has knowledge of things that might not even exist anymore, like the Kestia, that poisonous tick that uh, bit Nami on Little Garden. This was something that was extinct for a hundred years, and uh, most people just thought, like, oh, that that's that's just in the annals of history. No reason to worry about that anymore. Kreha was actually alive when the epidemic was around and she kept the antibiotics on standby just in case it would ever come back again. So that's one very handy part of it. So yeah, so yeah, you have other great doctors in the One Piece world, but in terms of just experience... Uh, there's no one better than Dr. Kareha. I mean, you could say that, well, Law's Oppie Oppie no Me kind of trumps that, but I would really take experience over anything, because, like, yeah, it might be possible that she could perform surgeries equally as good, if not better than Law. You know, Law's only, like, 27 years old. I mean, he's still, he's a great doctor, but he's got a long way to go. Uh, although, he, if Dr. Kareha had the Oppie Oppie no Me, like, there you go, right there. Best doctor in the land, you know, that's not even questionable at that point. You know, she would be a, she be the god of doctors at that point. Who was the god of doctors? Was that Athena? I don't know. Anyway, um, so 
she first shows up in the story on Drum Island. Uh, the Straw Hats arrive there. Nami needs help. She was bitten by the Castillon Little Guard, and of course they had no idea what that was at that point. Uh, she just came down with this really ridiculously high fever, and they didn't have anybody on the crew that could help her out. So they just happened to land on Drum Island, which just happens to be a land filled with doctors. However, it just happened to be in a point in their history where there were no doctors available. Uh, coincidences are abundant in the One Piece world, aren't they? The only doctor left in the land is Dr. Kareha, this, this witch that lives on a giant, she lives in a castle on top of a giant mountain. Not just a mountain, but like a sheer rock wall that's like, uh, like, 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 what was it? Like two miles straight up or something redonkulous like that, like a kilometer high or something. And it's just a straight up climb. And so it's, it's almost like at that point, the gods of the One Piece world are just like flipping off the straw hats. Like, oh yeah, there's a doctor, but you got to climb this kilometer high sheer rock mountain in the middle of a freaking blizzard while being flanked by carnivorous, uh, bear bunnies in order to get up there. That's all you gotta do. Um, and of course, Luffy, though, he cares about his crewmates more than he cares about his own life. So he's like, he's up for the challenge. And so not only with with Nami, but also Sanji, who gets injured, he gets a freaking spinal fissure during a freaking avalanche. Luffy um, carries Nami on his back and then he bites down on like Sanji's jacket and then proceeds to climb this giant ass mountain with nothing but his vest and his shorts and his sandals. And that is one one of the cringiest moments in One Piece where you see, like, the anime goes really into it where they show his skin getting all blue from the cold and had, like, blood and blisters all over. And it's like, oh my god, this is horrible. Finally, he gets to the top, and this is this is a great moment where um, he, his whole body's, like, on the verge of... Free, like, if we're being any realistic, his body is, like, frostbitten beyond repair at this point. Nowhere he's gonna be able to... Being rubber's not gonna solve that one, Luffy. But uh, he gets to the top, and he's basically passes out as soon as he gets to the top. Kareha and Chopper arrive, and you have this moment where Luffy grabs Kareha's arm... And is because she thought like he was passed out at that point. Like, please save my friends. And Kreha, you know, like she's not a bad person. All right. It's just she's just a little eccentric. You know, she took that Hippocratic oath to never willingly harm a patient. That doesn't say anything against blackmailing or extortion. So, you know, when she helps out somebody, she wants to be fairly compensated for it, but she will help you out. But it's that one moment where Luffy grabs her arm and she genuinely looks at him and just like, it's okay, kid. I'll make the, I'll make the girl and the, and the dying kid better. It's all right. Just relax. And, uh, yeah. So in, in that situation, she didn't worry about getting paid or any kind of compensation at that moment she's like all right this kid climbed this giant mountain wearing that just for the sake of helping out and now after all that he just wants to help make sure i, I heal his friends before him who's probably one of the worst out of all i mean nami's illness was probably worse than luffy having the frostbite and everything but his he, you know he was on the verge of dying as well but he's luffy so he was all right um yeah, so that, that, that was a good moment there. And honestly, Luffy, you know, he didn't know much about Chopper at this point, but he makes the logical arrival to the point where it's like, old lady, join my crew, you know? Like, you're the one that healed Nami. You're the one that healed, uh, you know, that, that fixed up Sanji and me. You know, you're obviously, like, one of the best doctors ever. Join our crew. And so Kareha's response to that is just like, you know, I'm too old to be playing pirate games or anything like that. Um, but, you know, it was an interesting scenario, you know? Okay, I don't know how that would have went. After that, Luffy finds out about Chopper. Uh, not only the fact that he's a great doctor, but also that he's a talking, transforming reindeer that possibly shoots lasers and and he was, oh, okay, yeah, we're all for that. And then we all, you know, went, went on that pathway too. Uh, the Drum Island arc, uh, on top of introducing Chopper, was also really good at with introducing Kareha. I, I think maybe a little bit more than the other mentors. Like, we had a, a, a cool scene with Zeph. Uh, during, you know, Sanji's introductory arc. Of course, we had Tom with Frankie and uh, Bellamere with uh, with Nami. But uh, the thing is, though, what, what was Zef? Zef's still alive, obviously, but you have, like, Tom and you have... Uh, well, Tom, we don't actually know about. He might be still alive. We don't know what happened with Tom. What? Maybe I need to make a video about that. What the fuck happened to Tom? 
he got taken away by the sea train and just never showed up again. But but Bellamy is of course dead. Uh, but you know Kareha is still alive. He's a men. She's the mentor to Chopper, who's also still alive. And we get to see you know how much she cares for Chopper throughout the entire arc, even though she doesn't show it directly. Um, you know, but she clearly doesn't want him to leave, but kind of knows that he has to leave the nest and everything like that. Uh, and it's so interesting just knowing because we find out their backstory too with Hero Luck and everything. How how um, Kareha didn't really have much to do with Chopper growing up. It was, you know, it was Hero Luck and Chopper that were like father and son kind of thing. And Kareha knew about Chopper's existence. Hero Luck told her, uh, but he, she didn't really care. And then finally, we have that moment where, uh, you know, Chopper brings him back that uh, Amami, uh, Amario Daki mushroom thing, poisons Hero Luck, but Hero Luck doesn't want Chopper to know that he poisoned him. He was like, no, you, you helped me, Chopper. Thank you. Now I'm all right. And then Kareha shows up at the house like, what did you do? And, and then she finds out what happened. And Chopper's going on and on about, oh, no, I found this magical curing mushroom. He'll be fine. You know, I saw this skull and crossbones next to it. And Kareha just Dex Chopper in the face, like, not once, but twice. Dex him right in the face. And then, I don't know why I'm laughing about that. I'm laughing about an old lady beating the crap out of a cute little reindeer. But and then, then she, he's like, wait, why did you punch me? And then she grabs him by the freaking collar, Dex him again. Uh, but after that, she calms down and, and, and tells him about really what it is to be a doctor. Like, this isn't a fucking game. This isn't a game. Like, you can find, like, some magical power power-up cure-all thing, and you eat it, and you're like, oh, every, every illness is here, is cured. This is serious business here. We become doctors uh, because there is no magical cure-all. You know, we're supposed to be the magical cure-all, and it takes work and time, and it's not something you could just do. Um, even if your intentions are the best they possibly can be, even if your intentions are good, um, if you don't know anything about medical you know, knowledge then you'll be causing a lot more harm than good at the end of the day. And that lesson really stuck with Chopper. And after the whole events with Hero Luck, Chopper really didn't have anywhere else to go. I mean, he was already shunned by all the members on the island, treating him as like some abomination, Yeti sort of thing. And so he takes, it's one of the, it's a sad ass moment, guys. You see next to Hero, he, he buries Hero Luck. We don't actually see this, but we can assume he, we see him carrying Hero Luck's body off of the mountaintop after he was, after he blows himself up. He takes his charred remains off of the mountain and then buries them with his hat. And then he's waving uh, Hero Luck's flag to Kareha, like, please, please teach me on how to be a doctor. And Kareha's like, all right, I can't, you know, I can't be that much of a bitch. You know, just, all right, call me Dr. Ean from now on, and I'll teach you. And then over the course of the next six years, Dr. Kareha teaches Chopper everything about, about medicine. And Chopper is, of course, a prodigy at this. And within six years, his medical knowledge is, is quite high. You know, it's not as, of course, not on the level of Kareha, not even close. But it's, I would say, maybe comparable to that of Laws, if maybe just around that same level of doctoring abilities. Like, he knows his shit. And he's like a child prodigy, a reindeer prodigy, however you want to call that. A fawn prodigy. Um... So yeah, that, that, that's the last time Kareha was like central to an arc, but we see her quite a bit after that. We see her after Chopper gets his first bounty. Uh, we see her again during the cover story when she finds the Ishi 100. The original uh, doctors on Drum Island were the Ishi 20, like the 20 best doctors in the land, but now that's expanded to 100 doctors. She's the head of them all, so maybe she starts like a medical school kind of thing, teaching you know the art of being a doctor. Maybe her experience with the Straw Hats and Chopper leaving, maybe changed her attitude a little bit because she like I said she used to do the kind of extortion thing where she would walk in and be like yeah this kid's pretty sick he's probably gonna die so you're gonna pay me half of this restaurant's earnings and everything you have and then I'll help him out right right okay right and a lot you know, that or very much she would just treat them first and then just take anything she wanted later you know so you know that's how she did it she kind of she kind of she was a boss man she was a boss you don't mess with Kareha but maybe the experience with straw with the straw hats and Luffy and Sanji and, and Chopper maybe that kind of lessened her outlook a little bit so maybe now she's trying to teach you know for the greater good you know and she's not you know maybe maybe following more stricter to the laws of being a doctor uh but maybe with maybe a little bit more doctor house thrown in you know kind of like follows the rules but you know bends them every now and then to her liking to her own personal 
personality. You know that that's Dr. Kareha. Uh, and you know what? She's coming back in the story very shortly because during Reverie we saw Dalton, who is the new king of the Sakura Kingdom on Drum Island, heading to Reverie. And Kareha didn't have to come. Kareha is just like, hey there, you know, want me to be the ship's doctor or whatever? And you know, uh, ne actually, never mind. I don't need your approval. I'm doing it anyway. Um, so she's going to be heading to uh, Reverie, and I I just can't wait. I mean, there's so many cool things I can't wait toward at Reverie. But I can't wait to see the reaction between, like, Dalton and Wapple. And you just know that, like, Kareha is going to be walking up behind Dalton and then saying something like, to, like, I can imagine Dalton and Wapple having an exchange and then Kareha just walks up. He's like, oh, well, if it isn't this blowhard again. And then just like, Kareha, damn you. He's like, ah, -ha. he's like, yeah, I don't care. I don't really care. You're a horrible human being and I wish you would have died years ago. Uh, but that would have been, yeah, because she just drop shade she don't care she'll just straight up start chucking battle axes at you she don't care uh you know you know willingly harm a patient i don't know i'm thinking about it she doesn't follow that hippocratic oath all too well chucking medieval weaponry at her patients that's that's how she deals with the situation there oh and let's not forget that one scene um i don't know how i could have forgotten this this is the most badass kareha moment i think in the entire story so you have Wapple coming back to the castle, right? He, he's been gone for years after the Blackbeard Pirates chased him off. He gets back to the castle, and it's Kareha, it's Luffy, and it's Sanji that walk out in front of the castle, and Chopper's there too. And they're, star they're staring down Wapple, Chess, and Kuramarimo. And it's like, okay, here's the epic battle. Here we go. This is going to be the end of the arc kind of battle. Luffy's going to take on Wapple and all that crap. And uh, I think it's uh, Sanji. That asks that asks her like, so you joining in, old lady? Are you, do you want some of this fight? And Greyhaw's just like, if they're too much for you to t handle, little boy, you know, I'll step in. But she's just so matter of fact with she. She's like, I don't have. I'm not fighting these fucks if I don't have to. Yeah, if you got it, go for it. But I love that because that implies like, if she really wanted to, she maybe not wapple. Because Wapple, when he's all jacked up with his freaking weaponry, you know, and everything going on, he was even able to take down Dalton in his, like, full, in his bison form. But I, I think, you know, Kareha, well, I don't know, who knows? With her medical knowledge, like, she knows where to cut you. <laughs> she knows, like, you know, she's pretty fast and pretty adept. If she wanted to, she could, like, speed behind. She is superhuman. She could speed behind you and, like, slice your spinal cord. It's like, oh, okay, quadriplegic. <laughs> <laughs> she could i mean she knows where to make an incision you know like yeah um so maybe she could have taken them down i don't know but she's like screw it i'm not doing it if i don't have to you guys got this be my guest um you know so that that was a, that was a pretty epic scene uh there one more thing and, and it's about her you know her policies and everything i just want to submit in how she does things here it's the scene with nami right um where you know, she's explaining the Kestia and the illness that she had and how lucky she was because she was going to die very soon. It's like a five day illness. And on day three, that's when they got it. And then she managed to cure her. And it's this moment where y you start to think Kareha, because we start off the arc thinking like she's some like wicked witch of the West up on top of the mountain. Like, <laughs> um, but then you meet her with Nami and she's calmly explaining what's going on with her and how, how sick she was, but she's going to be okay now and everything. And we start to feel like as an audience, like, Oh, okay. Maybe she's not as bad as everyone thought she was. But then she flips the switch with this crap where Nami's like, I got to get going. And she holds her down, holds a freaking scalpel to Nami's throat and is like, People don't leave. There's two two ways people leave my care. Either if they're healed or they're dead. There's no gray area here. Stay put, honey. You're getting your rest, okay? Um, that that was the most like, okay, no, she's a little scary. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to do a quick video about Kareha. Um, you, you know, and uh, it, it's, it's, I don't know, how old can she, like, like okay, so she's 141 right now, right? Uh, and this was something that Oda even said, like, because I think he said, like, humans in the One Piece world can live up to, like, 140. Like, how it is in our world, like, you know, you, people can live, if you're lucky, 100 years old. My grandfather is actually 95. He just turned 95 years old uh, this past year. So people like, let's say 90, 100, if you're really lucky in our world. In, in One Piece, the upper strata of that is like 140, you know, if you're lucky. But Kareha, he already confirmed Oda did that that she's like a superhuman. She goes beyond other people so that she'll live to be much long, uh, much, much uh, older. And don't worry about her, basically. She's got all this medical knowledge and everything to keep her spry and youthful, Sonny. 
Um, but, uh, yeah, and, and like, I, I mentioned this when I did my Roku Shiki video yesterday, not yesterday, three, three days ago, but it feels like yesterday, because I've been better in for so damn long, um, that, uh, she could potentially learn, like, these techniques if she wanted to, she is a superhuman, so, I mean, if she wanted to learn something like Soru or Finger Pistol or anything like that, I mean, she would totally be able to learn that, given her, her body structure and everything like that, uh, but now we're talking about Kureha's body structure, so I'm gonna get going now before this gets too weird, but, uh, Thanks for the support. Thanks to everybody on Twitter and everyone who was just like telling me to get better and everything. It wasn't a big deal. Uh, I just had to, you know, get some rest for a while and, and calm down, uh, you know, but it was, it was pretty, it was pretty hellish there the first night, but thanks for your support, everybody. Uh, have a good one and uh, I'll be back with regular content uh, in the coming days. So thank you very much. Signing out.